Hi guys, welcome back to a new class course. In this React.js class course, you will learn a lot of topics. But before getting into that, now let's just take a look at the official website. So here you can see that the first thing you can see on the uh, home page is it is a JavaScript library for building the user interfaces. So basically, React is a framework, a JavaScript framework that was created by Facebook in 2011 and it become more and more popular these days. So now let's just uh, scroll down a bit. You can see we have the ability to create uh, components, stateful components and a lot more. So what we will be learning in this class course? Well, right here, this is the project and amazing uh, and exciting projects that I've been creating so far. So we will be building this um, amazing pet collections, uh, online collections. So you uh, basically the user will be uh, about to add the name and also the pet age and the image of the uh, pet. And once the user click on this uh, button, it will just show the card down here. So the topics that I'm going to cover in this uh, class course that we will be looking into how the file structure works, the uh, create different components, uh, JSX, how styling works in React, and we look into routing, props, uh, events. We also um, use uh, the use state, which is basically the hooks in uh, React version 16.8 up until now, so it is recommended to use that. Um, we also look into how to add, uh, create the app, uh, pad functions, delete functions, and we create a form using the Material UI. Uh, it is a library from Google. We also learn how to fix the data from the actual server through an API, and we. Uh, look into different uh, method or requests uh, such as the put request, delete request, and post request. So there's a lot of topics that cover in this uh, cross course and I can't wait to show you the content of this. And before getting a uh, deep dive into that, now let's just uh, quickly uh, show you how this one works. So I'm going to uh, basically add a name, just call this uh, new pet as bean and the age I can just put as one and I, hurry, uh, I have already copied the URL so I can just paste it right here. This is the image URL and I can just click on this save button. So here it will just uh, try to get the value or try to get the image URL and it will just save it using the uh, post request and it's stored in the um, server, right, in the database. So here you can see that uh, once I click on that, this is the card that you can see with the name of the pet and we can also click on this link right here. So this is the favorite icon. So once I click on that, this will be uh, use the uh, uh, put request that is sent to the server and we can uh, see this right on the fly. Even though when I try to uh, refresh this page and you can see that this is the updated card and I also have the option or ability to uh, delete this card as well so when I click on this uh, card right here you can see that the data has gone so there's a lot of things that you will learn from this and I'm, I'm very excited to show you now let deep dive and also let's get started all right, guys, so first you have to install two software. First one is Node.js. You can come to the website here, Node.js.org. And to download this, you have to press on this button right here. So once you have it downloaded, you have to install it as usual. And also for this one right here, this is the Visual Studio Code. It is a place where you can write a code and compile it. And again, just come to the website here and click on this button. Uh, in this case, I'm using the Windows and there are the other operating system as well, such as the Mac OS or Linux. Then once you have it installed, then uh, we are ready to go. So the next thing that I do, I created an empty folder called React Cross Course in my drive D, as you can see here. And um, the next things that I do is I open this um, folder, the empty folder inside the uh, VS Code. As you can see here, there's nothing inside this folder right now. Okay, so um, once you have that, now let's just go back to this website right here. 
So this is the react.org um, and I open a page uh, referring to the uh, create a new react app. Okay, so once you are here, when I scroll down, you can see that there's a command um, right here saying uh, npx uh, create react app and then uh, my app right here. Okay, so just a quick one uh, right here, I open my command prompt as you can see uh, before running this code i just want to quickly show you uh, how you can check your uh, node.js version so you can press uh, node and that's v and here you can see that it says that this is the version that i'm running on and also with the uh, npm as well if you want to um, check that so right now you can see that this is the version that I'm running and you can see it also says that you will need to have Node.js which is greater or equal to 10.16 as well as the npm which is uh, greater than or equal to uh, 5.6 on your machine. Okay so next thing that I want to do is to navigate to the folder I created. So this will be dry D and I will need to go into the folder it's called react cross course so here uh, i can now run this command so npx create react app and i will need to call my uh, app name so i'll call this as react react cross course so it will be the same as the uh, folder name right here And it is now installing. All right, so after a couple of minutes, uh, it has been installed. Now, the next thing that I want to do is to navigate to that folder name. Um, right here, it's called React Cross Cost, which is exactly the same as folder I created previously. So right here, you can see that uh, inside this folder, there's a folder, the app name. Um, inside here, we have all of these uh, folders and files. We will get into that. So next thing I want to do is to basically run the uh, application by using the npm start. Okay. So type that. All right, guys. So here you can see that the application is now up and running. Uh, it's running on local host port 3000, as you can see here. So in here, this is the uh, folder. Uh, inside the VS code. Okay, so I just want to quickly um, try to explain you what the structure is. And also before getting into the explanation, I just want to also quickly show you the extension that I use. So uh, you can click on the extension right here and search for ES7 React Redux GraphQL React Native Smithpits. So you can see that it is more than 2 million downloads for these extensions. And the reason of this is that you can uh, use short code. So say if you want to create this particular um, type of template, then you have to run this uh, um, command or run the uh, code right here. So I will use uh, probably one of these. So in this case, probably this one uh, or a FCE then we will get into like uh, what is uh, actually mean for now let's just uh, come back to the code I just want to explain you this one real quick okay so here we have the uh, public folder right here we have the in um, the uh, five icon and also the index.html so there's a lot of thing here but don't worry about that for now and we also have the source folder uh, SRC stand for source and in here we have the app.js right here you can see that the text sayings like edit uh, source.app.js to save which is what you see right here okay so here we also have the index.js as well and you can quickly see that it is the um, document.getElementById uh, root so when i quickly go to the index.js right here you can also see that this is the ID that we grab it from. And now let me also just quickly change this uh, title. So say react cross course. When I click on the control S, it will save this. 
and when we come back here it automatically uh, refresh the page for us as you can see here we say react cross course so um, right here we can just go back to the app.js so here we have a tons of things we can change and everything but for now what I want to do I want to uh, basically get rid all of this and I just want to type something uh, so say I want to say um, hello stuff like this and I save it so now let's just go back here we can see that we get the text saying hello right here okay so that's the uh, index.js and also the app.js as well and here you can see that it also imports the app.css as well so this is the styling uh, for the CSS um, right here you can just type the CSS code and try to import it right here so once you have that you can just try to uh, call it uh, as seen here which is the class name equal to apps which again let's just take a look here it just say the text align uh, center so uh, the reason why you are seeing this center is because of this code right here okay now let's just take a look at the other so we have a uh, look into the uh, so this one index.css uh, which is actually uh, not uh, important at the moment and also the app.test which we want to look into in this uh, cross course uh, we also have the uh, logo which is the logo that you see spinning and uh, right here this is the report and also set up test which again it is not covered in this uh, cross course okay all right so um, now let me just go back quickly to the app.js what I want to basically do I can just get rid of this because we don't actually require the logo so now I want to go back to the index.js right here so here we can just uh, take a quick look at the top one here so it import the uh, react from react and also the react dom as well we also have the index.css and this is the app which is right here so once we have that uh, we can just try to use or uh, call the component uh, right here so this is the uh, app uh, slash uh, which is referring to this uh, right here the code okay so if um, you can take a look here so this is what you can see it look uh, similar to the HTML text uh, which is div but the thing is that this is called uh, JSX uh, it's not exactly the same as the uh, HTML which uh, normally we just have the class and then we call the um, name of the CSS but here we can see that it is called class name and there's a few things that uh, not exactly the same so now let me just quickly show you what is JSX here you can see that the syntax uh, we got h1 if we want to also use that and um, it's neither a string nor the HTML you can see right there it's called JSX so it is a syntax extension to the JavaScript and it is recommended to use with the react to describe what the ui should look like and it might remind you of like a, a template uh, language that come with the full power of the javascript okay and there's a lot more you can see we will get again into this uh, once we get into the course uh, in detail and here these are some of the example like say we have tag and wrap this inside the element um, there's a lot more here but again let now just uh, get into the coding I just uh, close this for now let's just only uh, open this one right real quick okay so now what if I want to have another diff so let's say if um, right here let me just put this into a new line say if I want to have another diff should I do something like this and say this time hi there and here you can see that we have an issue which says that um, the JS expressions must have one parent element meaning that we have to have uh, something that is wrapped around it so now uh, what I can do I can just come here and put it inside here 
also with the div uh, right here I just put it inside under the div uh, wrapping the hello and here you can see that we have also some issue as well which is uh, unreachable code detected so um, because right now we have more than one line of codes uh, here you can see we have a uh, different or uh, multiple div that's a reason why we have to use this bracket right here to wrap it okay so now when I save it now let's just go back to the website here you can see that we have two uh, which is first one hello and hi there now let me just uh, quickly inspect this for you to see as well so here inside the elements now let me just try to inspect the text hello here you can see that we have the um, parent uh, element which is the uh, div right here with the class name of uh, app here we can see uh, you can see we have two of this so what if I don't want to use this uh, actually using this at all I can use something called fragment if um, this is something that uh, let me just save that and show you real quick here you can see that we don't have the div which is the uh, parent element at all we only have these two okay so that's something that we can keep in mind which uh, something that we can also use whether we use the div to wrap around it or we use the something called uh, fragment okay so now let um, uh, let me just quickly remove this uh, for now okay so next is uh, something say if I want to store um, cons uh, of name uh, equal to my name so here it uh, try to store a string uh, called Hong now uh, I want to uh, show this name so here this is something that I can do with the color bracket and with the variable right here now let's just go back uh, you can see that we have the uh, text saying hello Hong okay so now let me just um, try to close this for now uh, what I'm going to do now is to basically create a new folder so here I would say something like uh, pages okay because uh, we uh, will have the uh, different pages so for now let me just also go back here um, and try to click on this uh, snippet again or the uh, extension again so right here you can see that this is uh, something that we can use which is uh, all a f c e which we will uh, it will try to create this um, component using the uh, arrow uh, functions okay so now uh, when we go back here you can see that this is look something similar to this and now let me just go back to the pages so what I'm going to do now is to create a new file inside this uh, right here and I also want to mention that it really doesn't matter whether I want to create like the folder called us like say uh, components or we have different uh, type of folder like say assets or hooks or the user or router but uh, I just want to keep uh, things simple I just uh, create a folder called pages if we go back uh, or come to the website here you can see that we have uh, the document saying the file structure as well uh, like what uh, supposed to be the structure of the react uh, project here you can see that we have the sample stay here but one more thing is uh, that uh, don't overthink about it uh, don't spend too much time on uh, choosing like the file structure just pick whatever it is and start writing codes we will uh, learn or try to understand this uh, after we write some real code okay so um, yep that's uh, actually what I'm doing right now I just try to create as simple as possible just saying uh, this is the pages so in here we would have something says like home or about page okay so now let me uh, just quickly create the uh, pages called home.js and another one called about.js okay just two uh, pages for now okay so right now uh, I would just use the uh, command just um, trying to go back uh, I keep showing you this uh, extensions um, just for now let me just try to uh, copy this part right here so um, right here you can paste it and if it doesn't actually showing anything uh, you can just try to yep just press that and 
uh, press on the uh, tab key on your keyboard here you can see that it tried to create this for us which use the name coming from the file as well again with this or a f c e right here it will try to create another component which is using the arrow functions as you can see here which is quite convenient when we uh, start thinking of using this okay um now let's just go back here what i want to do next is okay so before continue i just want to quickly show you the differences between the functional components and also the class component in react so in this uh, class course i will just use the uh, functional components uh, previously uh, we normally use the uh, class component okay so I just want to show you the syntax and right here you can see that this is the uh, functional component. Now let's just take a look at the uh, class component which looks something like this. We got the uh, class right here that extends the component which again uh, one of the major um, uh, benefits is uh, when using the uh, functional component is that we write less code and also we have the ability to handle or uh, handling the uh, states which uh, we will get into and um, I won't go in detail in this but I just want to mention that in this course we are using the uh, functional component okay so um, also one thing is that when we go back here we can also see that we are using hooks uh, in this tutorial which uh, let me just quickly see uh, show you here uh, here you can see that the uh, uh, hooks it's a new addition to the uh, react version 16.8 where we can use the state which I just uh, mentioned you um, a moment ago okay um, now let's just uh, go back to the code real quick and uh, what I am going to do next is uh, right here you can see that we import the react from react but it is actually not required at all right now so I can get rid of this okay so the next thing that I want to do um, I will create like the different routes so uh, we'll show you how to install that uh, uh, npm package okay so here you can see that uh, I open inside this uh, website the npmjs.com here uh, this is the uh, package called react router DOM the reason of uh, what I'm trying to install right now is that because uh, using this uh, it allow us to navigate to different pages on the website or uh, on the react app because uh, react app it doesn't provide the ability or the built-in functions of uh, navigating to different pages compared to the uh, different languages okay so now let me just try to grab this real quick and go back to the terminal i can just uh, press on the control c to uh, terminate this right here and i just paste it here now we try to install this package for react we have tons of these uh, libraries or the uh, packages that we can install uh, that provide different types of functions or additional features okay so now uh, once this install we will go back to the uh, code for now let me also try to quickly create a new file so uh, under the um, source I create a new file called dev.js which stands for the uh, na navigation on nav. So um, I will try to use that command again or afce and create another the uh, component using the uh, functional component with, uh, with the uh, arrow function. Um, right here I'll just uh, try to uh, we will import the uh, library right here so now let's just take a quick look again uh, it's still installing all right here you can see that it is now installed I just want to also uh, mention that right now I'm using the command prompt but uh, with the BS code we also have the ability like the built-in of using the terminal as well right here so we can either use the uh, command prompt right here or we can just use this for now I'll just uh, use this one so that you can just see it right on the fly uh, now let's just uh, after installing the uh, package or the library we will need to uh, start this again 
so um, right here you can see that uh, it cannot start the reason is that we uh, remember that we have the folder which exactly the same uh, name as the um, app name which is the uh, react cross course now let's just uh, run this again using the npm start okay so here it's now starting uh, as you can see here so let me also try to close all of this okay so now let's just go back real quick uh, right here inside the nav.js what I want to do is trying to import the library that we just installed uh, right here I just use the import link and uh, react router DOM uh, at the moment you might not be um, understanding what I'm doing right now um, but uh, bear with me uh, you will get into this in detail okay so um, right here instead of using dev in this case I will just use the nav the navigation all right so um, next thing I want to uh, basically use is to use the link that I imported uh, up there uh, which is uh, now we can just say something inside here I would just use the div tag okay so div tag inside here we can have like the styling uh, we can just say like font size I want to have the custom fonts uh, say like 30 pixel right here we can have like home um, now let's just save it here you can see that this uh, would look something like this for now um, also uh, where is it actually going to like when I click on this uh, home text or home div then uh, it will just try to uh, basically link me to the uh, home page which in this case this is where I supposed to go which is the home page and I would just uh, try to copy this and try to paste another one in this uh, case this one will be the about so I would say like about page for now um, this would look something like this but uh, we haven't done yet we have to try to create or try to import or using the routes uh, on the uh, app.js right here which is say this is like the main file um, right here we only have the uh, hello now let's just try to quickly import the uh, home right so home coming from the uh, we have the page right here pages uh, slash home okay uh, the same for the about we want to import the about page or the about component so it will be about right here and here what I want to do I will just try to get rid of all of this so currently or right now we are trying to instead of using like the div uh, we use the router which allow us to navigate to different pages like I mentioned so it will be using with the keyword uh, routers and again just don't forget to import it on top here as well so it will be uh, browser router as router uh, switch we are switching and this is route coming from the uh, library we install which is react router dom okay so that would look something like this and inside the router we haven't done yet uh, we can uh, right here let me uh, try to put the bracket here as well because we are going to have the multiple um, tags inside here so this is the router uh, we will have the we use the, let's say this time I'll use a fragment and inside this fragment we can have the uh, switch okay so inside switch we can have routes we in now let me just try to use the uh, self-closing tag with the path where it is going uh, which is going to the home page and the component right here which is the uh, home component which we imported on top here okay and um, let me just try to copy and paste this one so 
for this one you might already guess what happened I use the uh, about which the component is referring to the about page okay so it would look like this for now let me just quickly save that and here um, the switch is supposed to be switch like this let me uh, try to yeah, compile and this is no actually not required let me just get it of this let's save that again okay so here this is what it looked like uh, we have the home which right now it says nothing I can just type like a text saying like home uh, this is the about and now let's just try to go to the home page um, here we see that we have um, the home okay so here you can see that right now it actually uh, does nothing the reason is that uh, we uh, whenever that the application run it will just try to go through this uh, path which is the component uh, of home and it just show us with the uh, text saying it's like home as you can see here okay so um, now what I want to do next is to uh, try to import this nav as well because right now uh, it's supposed to show us this text but it actually not uh, importing yet so let's just import the nav from it will be the nav and uh, we also need to import it right here um, let's just call that component it's called nav so if you notice you can see that I put it outside of the switch the reason is that if we put it inside here uh, when we go to the different pages this will not be showing but if we put it outside of switch it will just always show uh, in this case I want it to show it on top of the page okay so now let's just try to go back here and here you can see that we have home we have the about so if I click on the about and um, right here this is supposed to be the about uh, if you guys notice when I have the typo okay so now let's just try to go back here uh, this is supposed to be about right now let's just save that again it recompile go back here so it will try to refresh this page uh, now when I try to go to the about it is not showing me when I click on this about okay so now let's just go uh, back to the code and try to quickly fix that so one of the reason is that because right here you can see that the path um, that we provide in the app.js um, this is uh, referring to the home page but it has to uh, have to use the uh, keyword which is the exact otherwise it's just going to go through the home page because right here we haven't specified anything yet so this is just to keep in mind again uh, if you are using this uh, slash without anything behind it uh, it is uh, it, it required to use the uh, exact keyword okay so now let's just try to here you can see that uh, when I go to the home uh, clicking on here we can see this is the home it try to read uh, going to that page and when I click on the about it going to the about page and also the URL has changed as well so uh, if you notice uh, when I go back and for the page doesn't really load at all or refresh at all so this is one of the uh, benefit of using react with the uh, library that I show you which is the uh, react router dorm okay or you can just uh, use the a tag as well but again when you are using react this is supposed to uh, be using okay so now we have that we have the uh, nav uh, showing all the time I just want to uh, try to uh, make this uh, to look a little bit better um, so here the link um, uh, I can just style this uh, so this is the again JSX uh, we can just use style with the color uh, I would just use the white color okay um, text decoration this will be equal to none uh, I'll show you why I use this one decorations and with the two yep that's supposed to be so um, right here we have the uh, link which is yep that should be fine for me 
uh, let's just try to save that and quickly see the result okay so here we have the text okay for now let me just uh, go to app uh, dot CSS so right here um, I think we actually don't need any of this let's just get it all of this and uh, I'll pass this code right here so this is the nav uh, which the display uh, is flex uh, is spaced around uh, with the uh, align items is in the center and uh, with the uh, minimum height which is 10 view height uh, the background which is this color and the color of the text which is white I create uh, another one right here this is the uh, nav link uh, which uh, in here for this class I have this uh, as mentioned okay so uh, let me just save that and go back to the nav and I want to import it right here okay so to import the CSS just use the uh, import uh, app okay so here I import this uh, app dot uh, CSS and the nav here it will just try to uh, automatically apply the styling when I use this and uh, now let's just go back to the website and here you can see that this is what it's uh, supposed to look like right now okay so um, I will need to also fix this one as well now let's just go back to the code and uh, instead again uh, I want to uh, uh, call this uh, class right here so now let's just go back to the nav um, I will try to use the uh, ul uh, using the html you would already know this one already uh, I'll call the class name equal to the nav uh, link okay so I'll call this class name and now um also i want to have the decoration here as well so i want to uh, quickly copy this and paste it right here okay so now let's just save that the text decoration here basically it is uh, supposed to show us with the uh, underline and we don't want to have that shown and this is the uh, use of that and here you can see we have the home we have the about and uh, this is the uh, navigation menu on top there okay so that's the purpose and again if you notice uh, right now I'm using the mix of between uh, using with this uh, inline uh, CSS or the uh, JSX styling and as well as using this uh, app.css as well um, you can basically try to convert all of this to so say like uh, justify uh, look, look something like this the content uh, you can put that inside this uh, style as well uh, but uh, again I just want to show you we have uh, uh, different uh, choices uh, where we can try to uh, implement when it comes to using uh, react okay so um, this is one uh, way using the inline uh, styling now uh, what I want to do next is to say uh, this case right here it doesn't really make sense at all uh, we have this but just in case uh, in the future you have a few more uh, pages then it would be something like this uh, let's say this is the contact us page all right contact us page this is maybe something called history um, now let's just go back here um, here you can see that we can have uh, multiple uh, different uh, menu where uh, right here you can just add like a space here as well so uh, instead of like uh, having the uh, font size we can just add like the uh, margin right or margin uh, top uh, right here just uh, yep but for now uh, uh, this is what it's supposed to uh, look like okay and for the home page again it because I'm using or I try to show it on the left and yep that's what it looked like at the moment okay so we have home and the about so I uh, just want to recap so far um, right now we have uh, try to install the uh, library which uh, require or which allow us to uh, navigate into different pages without refreshing the page uh, we also look into using the inline uh, 
uh, Starlink inside uh, with the JSX and we also import the CSS which uh, again this is pure CSS code uh, where you can try to import it here and it will try to apply and when you use the class name uh, you will need to use the uh, class with the uh, name right here capital letter okay um, now we have all of this we uh, we if you want to also install or maybe probably uh, you want to uh, implement the footer you can do that as well you just need to uh, create another component called footer and put it down here so it will show you that all the time all right now we already look into the styling the inline styling uh, i want to also show you there's another option as well the alternative way uh, where you can uh, try to apply so say in this case i want to uh, because right here we are inside the nav i can just call this as uh, nav style and uh, inside here i can just try to grab this uh, right here the color and also text decorations uh, just paste it right here okay uh, now let me try to uh, copy this and we save it um, right here instead of uh, right here uh, double curly break we can just use this uh, right now I want to also get it off this one as well so it will be nav style all right so see if we get the same result or not this is just another way that we can use and here you go guys uh, here when I try to refresh it's still showing me the same result so that's also one of the um, benefit of uh, declining it uh, down here whenever that we have the uh, uh, the same exact uh, styling or code okay okay so next thing that I want to show you is the prop so what prop does is basically if I want to uh, try to pass the value from the parent component to a child component then how would I do that it will uh, require the use of the uh, prop okay so now let uh, try to uh, show you one example real quick and um, right here say if I use or call the uh, home uh, home component uh, right here we can see that we have an error because we again must have one uh, parent element and actually this is not required or the fragment right here I just put it uh, on top and just move this to the bottom so it will just wrap these two okay so say if we want to uh, passing a text right here say like home or probably just say home page I want to pass this value to my uh, child component then what do I have to do um, right here instead of using like the uh, the uh, dummy data or the text right here I can just use the keyword props okay and right here if I want to call that uh, just use the curly bracket and uh, it's supposed to be props dot and this will be the uh, text right here okay so uh, right here again uh, we just try to use the uh, call the component with the uh, self-locking text and for this value you can just name it anything uh, in this case I just want to call it as the text uh, prop and this value will show us the uh, home page and here uh, we call or use the uh, props and right here props dot uh, text which referring to this one right here now let's just take a look at the website here it's showing me this uh, the uh, home page right here okay so um, that's the uh, one way of using the props okay so what happened if I don't provide any text right here so say if I get rid of this and uh, save it now let's just go back here of course we won't see anything on the website now here you can see that but uh, there's a way that we can uh, basically can define the uh, default value so to define the default value we can just say it's like uh, home dot default props okay and in here we can just say like text equal to home page now let's just save that and let's just go back here 
here this is the result which uh, it's showing us a uh, home page and also down here home page as well so you might be wondering it's a little bit different from what i show you a minute ago the reason is that right here this is the default value uh, when we come here remember that we also have the homes uh, right here as well the uh, it's supposed to be not showing anything but the reason we are using the default prop that's a reason why it's showing me uh, both uh, one right here and the other one which is down here okay so um, that's use uh, the use of the default prop um, what happened if I is there like basically any way that I can just uh, show or use the uh, shortcut there's one as well so instead of using the props uh, keyword in the parameter here we can just directly use the text as sh uh, show here and this is um, something that we can also use so now let me just try to save and see if we get the result also I just want to uh, comment this one out for now let's just uh, save it and go back uh, quickly show you the same one uh, will be home page which I pass from the parent component to this child component through uh, use the use of this uh, syntax okay and here it is guys uh, here we can see that we have the uh, exact same result now this time uh, we use the uh, better code which is uh, writing uh, less code okay so that's the use of the uh, props all right, so next things I want to show you is the prop type. So now let me just quickly try to use this uh, prop type. Uh, so it will be prop types and right here uh, will be text will be equal to prop types uh, dot string. All right. And remember to import it on top here as well. So it will be the uh, let's just import propped types from prop types right let's just save that um, here uh, with the typo or it's supposed to be prop types uh, dot string okay so um, now let's just go back to the text here uh, here uh, we use the uh, string that should be fine but what happened if I try to change this to say like boolean or something else or also just to mention if you are using or uh, try to pass the uh, value such as the uh, uh, number or the boolean then you have to use this curly bracket uh, for a string you just need to use the double quote okay so now let's just pass a uh, hundred right here and let's just go back to the website uh, now let's just say uh, the inspection now let's just go to the uh, let's see the consult and here you can see that the uh, it's file the prop type the invalid prop uh, supposed to be the text of type uh, number so it applies to home so it's actually expecting the uh, string instead of like the number so there's uh, basically like a way uh, just to check uh, to make sure that everything is uh, working as expected even though this is uh, still working but yep that's uh, one thing if you want to also have this uh, implement or check as well okay so this is the prop type if uh, you familiar with the TypeScript which I also have a cross course on TypeScript as well we can also use TypeScript uh, implemented with the uh, react as well okay so um, yep just to show you the use of the prop types in here all right so uh, one more thing here i can just use something like say is uh, required right so uh, when i supply this here meaning that this is actually required now let me just quickly save that and go back to this website here uh, you can see that it says the prop text uh, here it marked as required in home but the value is undefined that means that uh, we can have this so the default prop here let me just save that again and just quickly go back um, let me just refresh this as well and here you guys can see um, right now it, the uh, warning actually gone uh, because we have already provided the value here so that's something that uh, you can use uh, if you uh, want to 
Now let me just comment this out and try to go back to the previous one like so. Okay, so for the uh, prop here, uh, this is just one example of uh, passing like the uh, string or the text in uh, from the uh, parent component uh, into the uh, child component right here. But um, for the other use cases, uh, it can be you say um, you have another uh, component. Uh, it can be like the button component or it can be like the card component. Then you can basically pass from the uh, parent component here into the uh, child component uh, using like the styling maybe uh, you want the particular text or uh, the particular card or button to be like uh, different colors then you can also do that as well passing um, from the uh, parent to the uh, child uh, through the uh, property um, uh, with the styling not only just a uh, text I show you here it can be like say um, style and then uh, you can pass uh, the prop uh, put it in here or probably uh, if you don't want to have that you can also pass like the uh, event as well like say uh, on click then you can just put like uh, something on top here uh, say like on click and down here uh, it can be if uh, it is like the on click uh, event then uh, what it should look like it should be the uh, prop types uh, dot uh, funct right so this is uh, what it's uh, supposed to be uh, if you are using something called on click but um, I'll get into the events uh, in a minute uh, right now I just want to quickly show you that it not only accept like the string but it can be events it can be uh, use it as for the uh, styling or it can be like showing us the uh, text or the uh, say if you have the button then you want to change the text on the button you can do that as well okay so yep that's uh, the benefit of using the props uh, next I want to show you is to try to install the uh, material UI okay so here uh, I'm on the uh, material UI.com this is basically a place where we can use the existing component that already built um, it is from Google uh, I would say one of the most popular uh, library out there for react Okay, so um, to install this, uh, quickly just run this command npm uh, add material UI uh, slash core. So now let's just go to the code and um, I want to terminate this for now, pressing Ctrl C. And here it is. Uh, let me just uh, quickly install this. Okay, so here uh, while it's installing, uh, here you can see that we can also use the uh, CDN as well. So uh, right here we just need to paste uh, in this link and for the usage here you can see this is one example like um, try to uh, import the button and this is what it look like uh, they have a lot of components so now uh, let me also show you as well like uh, I'm trying to go to the components here um, we have a lot of components as you can see uh, this is the uh, we have the box under the layout so um, this is the button all right so these are the uh, sample where we can uh, if we want to apply we can click on the uh, code here to see the code then uh, we can just copy and paste it in the application um, now what I'm looking for uh, they have a lot of this you can come to the website and try to uh, see uh, one by one right here but I won't go through all of this so what I'm looking for right now I'm looking for the uh, card right so here this is the card uh, we have um, different uh, sample so this is the uh, another one and this is the media which uh, we can have like the image on top and the text underneath here uh, the button uh, down here as well so right here you can see um, this is the uh, combination of using the div element alright so now let's just click one of this and see the uh, sample so this is what uh, it's supposed to look like uh, for the code um, as well as this one okay so here um, it tried to export these functions but yep, that's uh, super fine. Uh, I think let me just try to 
uh, quickly copy this one all right so now let's just go back and quickly see this it's the installing it's quite huge uh, now it's installed let's just try to run the application again now it's running let's just come back here i want to quickly get rid of the text on top here uh, which is actually not required uh, just remove that and uh, we don't want to uh, pass anything just for now uh, i just want to show you uh, how this one actually works but uh, let me just try to uh, remove this and then get back to the previous one which is just showing this one as home like that okay now let's just come back here uh, which i want to save it that's the reason why it's showing okay so now um yep that would look something like this so the next thing that i want to now do is to try to import the um right here the component using the uh, material ui so here it got the let me just try to copy all of this for now okay so we will be using the home page uh, let me just try to import everything here and now with the use style as well with the root and also media yep let's just copy this part as well um, it's supposed to be on top here and then we need to use this class and the return yep just copy this part copy that um, the reason is that because right now uh, right here you can see that it's a export default while the application that uh, we are trying to use or trying to run is um, basically the home uh, right here right so i just need to paste everything here right yep it now trying to compile okay so um it seemed to work fine okay so here it is here you guys can see that we have a card showing um i can just uh, click on this but for now it does nothing uh, the image is actually not showing uh, we will look into this one real quick as well so for now we have the card showing uh, let me just try to quickly explain you what this does um, basically we try to import um, the card uh, the card area uh, action area with the card action the content the uh, card media which is the uh, referring to the image part and this is the referring to the uh, text uh, this is the button and the uh, typography uh, the make style here is uh, something that we can just define uh, anything uh, with the uh, value right here which basically similar to uh, what I show you using the uh, style uh, right here so inside the nav um, we got something like this as you can see uh, with the fonts and everything but this is come with the default one and the thing that you see right here this is coming from the uh, material UI okay so just don't get this confused so once we have that uh, defined we can just basically put it into like a class and now if you want to use that we just need to call classes dot it can be like this case this is root or it can be in the uh, media uh, where we just uh, specify like the height of the uh, card um, right here it's just showing us the uh, link link to the uh, image right now we don't have this image yet uh, I will try to replace this with uh, with the uh, another URL and this is the title um, title here I can just change it uh, say like pet just for now um, uh, here we have the uh, lizards uh, this is the uh, text and the button down here as well share and also the uh, learn more it does not things which I just uh, show you we can use something called like on click event where when we click on this uh, button then it just uh, take action uh, based on the uh, event that we use okay 
So um, I now I want to do is to basically create like a uh, random uh, data like uh, probably put it here okay all right so um, here I have defined the uh, data uh, as you can see uh, we have the ID we have name age and also the image uh, as well the URL to this image um, so now uh, we can use this uh, variable uh, called pets um, what I want to do now is to basically turn this uh, particular, this single card into uh, multiple cards uh, by using the uh, loop, uh, using the map function, okay? So here you can see we only have this, uh, just one card. Now, um, now let's see if uh, I can turn this into the uh, cards uh, using the uh, pads. So the function would be um pets dot map okay right here this should be pets um just put another one here this will be a arrow functions uh where it will just try to uh let me just try to copy everything which is all the card here just cut that and paste it inside so it would look something like this uh, what i need to replace is to basically replace this uh, url or the image with the uh, pads dot this will be the img uh, pointing to this image all right um, so for the title let's just keep it as is uh, this is the uh, right here just need to replace this with the name so this will be pad.name um, right now we don't have the uh, random text here yet let's just keep this one as is uh, we have share button I want to also show probably instead of this I show this as the uh, age uh, what else do we have we have the ID but yep let's just uh, see if we get this up and running save that go back here and here you guys can see we have the card showing uh, the first one here is the uh, dog called Ruby with the age of um, two years old and this is uh, Coco with the age of four years old and we have this but that's nothing for now yep it's uh, run up and running we're using the uh, map function all right so uh, what I want to do now is to um, probably try to change the height of this so instead of probably try it like 200 pixel and see if we get a better yep uh, a better one right here we got more space and uh, the text down here as well okay um, I want to change this text say probably to something else it can be probably delete right let's just say this is a delete button uh, learn more it does nothing just keep it for now before moving on let's just take a look at the uh, browser again now let me just quickly inspect this and go to the console and here you guys can see that it say uh, there's a warning uh, each child in a list should have a unique key prop um, that is something that we need to also fix okay so now let's just uh, come back here uh, what we can do right now um, go to the right here so this is like the uh, basically like the top one uh, what I can do now I can just use the uh, one called key okay so it will be uh, unique so this will be pad.id which referring to this because it has got different uh, id it's not duplicated at all now let's just save that and go back again uh, refresh this and here you guys can see it now has gone so we just need to also uh, provide the key as well okay so now we all have this 
um, next thing I want to do is now we uh, will get into the uh, state so to use state in uh, react uh, we just need to import it on top here so let me just try to quickly import it on top here it will be import use state from react okay save that and down here um, I can just try to use or call it so it will be the syntax would look something like this const uh, pads set pads equal to use states and because right now on top here you can see we are using the array that's why we can just provide this as the an empty one array here um, if you are using like normal ones like say string then you can just leave it uh, like this or just put it like empty then uh, now I want to use the state instead of uh, this one here the array um, get rid of this now I can now just uh, paste everything inside like so okay now let's just save that uh, here we have the uh, use states and the data inside it and also the pads here which basically we are still using it with map and see if we get the same result or not okay guys so here you can see that we still get the exact same result when we try to uh, now use the uh, states okay okay so next thing I want to show you is the uh, global state so right now what you can see here um, these are the data that is actually inside this uh, home component um, now what I want to do I want to basically cut everything here um, and then put it inside this app.js okay so I'll just uh, paste it right here uh, remember to also uh, cut this one as well the use states I want to move it and put it in here the um, parent component and the next thing I want to do um, okay so this should look fine for now let's just save that and also with this one as well um, right here it say the pad is not defined uh, because we have to also pass the data from this uh, apps into the uh, home uh, JS through the uh, props okay so right here I want to um, yep just a quick example I will just uh, put it right here it will be uh, normally it would look something like this home uh, with this closing text and also with this uh, this will be pads equal to the pads okay so I pass the data uh, it coming all from here and uh, it will come through this so we just need to provide the uh, pads the props and then once it has that it will just come to this uh, which will basically render all of the data um, here it says that uh, the map is undefined um, that's probably coming from here because uh, I just want to quickly show you that it's uh, running or render from here for now let's just uh, comment this one first okay guys so here you can see that uh, it is uh, working fine but the thing is that uh, we don't want to have the uh, nav uh, at the bottom of the page uh, let's just uh, quickly fix that so uh, I don't want to have that uh, instead for the component using with routes uh, we can just uh, actually turn this into the function and just uh, copy here uh, just cut it and paste it here so this would uh, work fine using this now let's just take a look let me refresh this and here you guys can see that uh, we still get the same exact result and uh, there's no issue on top here as well okay so uh, just a quick one here uh, if you want to uh, read more come to the website here about routes uh, where we can just pass the um, prop uh, using with uh, the function that I just show you using this one or you can also use the other one which is looking some uh, like this uh, the accept 
the functional component. Uh, yep, just look. Uh, you can uh, read more about this. And now that we look into the uh, global states. Okay, so again, uh, quickly um, try to explain you. So what is the purpose of basically uh, try to move uh, all of the data, data here and then uh, pass through the prop uh, while this is just a home page? Uh, I just want to show you um, this is just one example, but uh, you instead of like thinking this is like a home page, you can just consider this as like the uh, path uh, where all of the data can be different uh, throughout the apps. Then uh, this is just one example where we can just uh, try to reuse uh, this again and again. It's just like uh, we try to create a reusable component. Okay, um, that's a reason. Uh, we can try to use uh, or try to show you which is using the global state I just show you uh, pass through the uh, data through the prop here just thinking this as the uh, pets.js uh, or the pet component alright guys so the next thing that I want to show you is to basically refactor this code so here you can see that inside the home uh, component we have uh, most of the code uh, it's all related to the card uh, component as you can see here then uh, what I want to do now is to uh, cut most of the code here and then put it into a separate uh, card component then we pass the value through the prop okay so now I can create a new file called card.js or you can call uh, the other name as well say like um, pad.js uh, that should also be fine um, the next thing I want to do now is to uh, try to cut the code so it will be let me try to create uh, this one first so R A F C E and uh, it will create a a card component using the arrow functions uh, so this is not required get rid of this and then I will cut all of this all right so paste it here and this is as well on top of the uh, functional component and then the classes right here so just put it here and then for the card basically all of this let's just yep cut everything and put it inside here okay so now we will need to import that card component so call card coming from the card right here and we will try to call that uh, card component we will need to pass uh, this value the data uh, and then pass it through the prop so it will be pads like so okay so we have that and then come back here we will need to also uh, right here will be pet okay so here it says the cards okay guys so here you can see that uh, we got a, an error message saying the card has already been declared so the reason is that because um, the uh, material UI that we use the component cards it basically the same name so uh, that's a reason why it got this error message so uh, what I want to now uh, do is to change this from card to pet like I mentioned previously um, right here so we have pet and I want to also change the uh, name here as well so from card to pet uh, home this will be pet head right here the same as this um, no at the moment and then pad as well All right now let's just take a look again okay so it's up and running let's refresh this 
and here you guys can see we have the same result just one thing is that we need to also remember to provide the uh, unique key prompt so let now just go back here and here we just need to have the key equal to pad.id right let's just save that take a look again and here we go guys uh, we have successfully refactored this code we cut all most of the code uh, from the home components uh, into this uh, pad uh, component which is basically uh, the car uh, component all right so it look a lot cleaner right now and we pass through the value through this prop and provide the uh, key as well all right guys so next thing that i'm going to show you is to create a function to remove a pad so right here on the website you can see we have two so what I want to do is to basically click on this button, then this uh, card will be removed. Okay, so to do that, um, right now, let me just close the file that not in use for now. So we only require this um, three file, apps, home, and the pet. Okay, so uh, right now I want to create a function. I'm going to create it right here. So it will be const I call this function as remove pet. This will be the arrow function. And inside here, let me just console log this one for now. So remove pet uh, will take the ID. And um, the ID should be here as well. Okay, so now um, we have this created. And I'm going to pass this um, function to, uh, through the prompt. So Right here, it will be the uh, on remove. All right. So this is the uh, name on remove, and this is the function uh, remove pet. Okay. So here uh, inside this home, I will also uh, pass the uh, function right here as well through the prompt. It will be on remove and again for this one this will be on remove and this is the function on remove the same way we apply to this one so right here this will be on remove and this time it will be uh, right here this is the um, the function where that we need to uh, specify uh, this will be uh, using with the events on click. So on remove and this will be pad.id. We want to get the ID. Alright, so it will look something like this for now. Now let's just um, go back to this right here. So what it does is uh, whenever I click on the um, delete button then it will just show me the ID of that card. Okay, so now let's just come back here. Just inspect this real quick. Uh, we'll be in the console. So now let me just click on this. And here you guys can see uh, we have the remove pad number one. So when I click on the second one, it show me number two. And this is what it look like right now. So we will get this ID. All right, so now we have that. Uh, what I'm going to do now is to uh, try to uh, get the uh, function right here. Uh, building the function. So I'll use set pads, uh, pads dot filter, because right now we don't have the actual server. So I'm going to show you using the uh, filter functions. So what this does is it will uh, filter out um, the pad ID if it's not equal to the ID that we provide here then uh, we just filter that particular uh, card out all right so now let's just save it again okay so now let's just check here so when I click on this you can see that the card remove which is the uh, remove pad uh, number one and when I click again it will just remove number two 
But the thing is that when I try to refresh the page, everything will come back because right now it is not actually the actual server. Like I said, it, right now we only create like a function just to filter it out, but the, uh, the data is still here. Okay. So that how we basically create uh, the function to remove the pad uh, using the filter. And just want to also mention that the state it passed down uh, while the action is actually passed up. So what I mean by that is that right here, the state, uh, we got this here. Uh, we passed down it to uh, the home and then it passed down to this pad. But for the action, which is the uh, on remove, it will just pass up from uh, this to home and it up to the um, app.js here. Okay, so the next thing I want to show you is to, uh, because right now uh, we have this uh, learn more button, right? But it does nothing at all. So I want to actually change this one to something else. So it would probably uh, the icon like the favorite icon so to install the icon now let's just uh, come to the pad.js here so we will need to install an additional library uh, which is right here it's called material UI slash icons um, to install this now let's just try to copy this command go back here I'll need to terminate this for now Um, let's just copy that again make sure it's copy okay so right here okay that has been installed all right so what I can do I want so I open this in the uh, this website right here so let's just quickly search for the favorite right so this is the heart I want to have this um, implemented so I'll just import the icon button first so this is required it will be material UI slash core slash icon button um, and the other one which is the actual one uh, I'll call this as favorite icon from material UI slash uh, this one will be icons slash favorite So it would look like this right now uh, just scroll down We will need to replace this with that icon. So this will be Icon button And inside here we just call that favorite icon with the closing text give it a label area label I'm gonna say um, add to favorites just like that um, right now let's just quickly save this um, it cannot find the module icons dot favorite so um, right here uh, we forgot this slash right forward slash okay successful now let's just come back and refresh this and here it is guys uh, we have this icon so right now um, I just want to quickly show what happened when we click on this right here let me just give a color just uh, for this one it will be the uh, color uh, secondary we have primary, we have secondary, and uh, a few more. But for now, uh, here, when I click on this, it's supposed to show me the uh, red color. Okay, so what about the primary? Let's come back here. So this is uh, by default. Um, by default, it's supposed to be the gray color. Okay, guys, so if you're not sure like uh, what property you should provide here, uh, just search for the icon button then uh, you will be able to find this uh, color right here so the property uh, with the type of the false uh, inherit uh, primary and also the secondary so right here I'll just use this uh, default 
Um, so let's just say by default, this is what it's supposed to uh, look like with this color. Okay, so with this gray color, if I uh, click on this button right here, then it's supposed to show me the uh, red color. So I will need to also write the uh, condition right here as well. But for now, let's just uh, keep this as is. Then uh, we get into this one. Right guys, so for now, I added a new uh, data here. So it's called the uh, is favorite by default is set as true. That means the uh, favorite icon, it become red by default. So for this is for the first card. And for the second one, uh, I set this one as false. So next, I want to create a function. Uh, I'll call this as if favorite uh this as id with the error function i want to console log this for now uh, i'll say is favorite the id and down here i'll just say on favorite so this will be the is favorite like that so now come to the uh, home JS. We will pass this into this uh, home. So it will be the on favorite. Uh, the same for this on favorite. On favorite. Now uh, it passed down to the uh, pad.js. Uh, so right here. This will be on favorite. So it, this one, it's not the button, but it's the uh, icon button. So right here. Okay, so this um, icon button has to be clickable and which is quite similar to this one. Let me just uh, copy this and paste it right here. So this one, instead of a remove, it will be the uh, on favorite, okay. Okay, so now let's just take a look here. Um, now, when I click on here, here you can see that it's favorite uh, one. And when I click here, this is it's favorite number two. Okay, so that works. All right, so now let's just try to uh, use these uh, set pads. What I'm going to do is to use this. So this time it will be mapped through all of the pads. So each one of the pads, um, now this will be the pads.id so if it is the same or if it is equal to the id then what it does it will just uh, right now just leave it like this if not that mean that we're going to use this as uh, showing us a normal one like the pad so inside here i'll use the uh, pads so three dots uh, pad here this mean that we just copy all of the uh, pads and in addition to that we have the uh, is favorite all right so is favorite the opposite of it so if say by default it is true then if we click on this uh, button then it will just uh, do the opposite of this so it will be uh, pads dot is favorite Okay, so yep, that would look something like this. So to make sure if this is working, now let's just uh, quickly save this. And let's just go back here. So right here, you can see that I opened the uh, React Developer Tools. Uh, you can download this extension for the uh, Chrome. So once you have that right here, let's just right click or you can just go here with the uh, components here so right now you can see that we can see all of the uh, different components that we have built so far so the first one here is the app so right now let's just take a look at the hooks so states uh, we have two data so the first one here is the uh, pad number one which is ruby right now by default this is uh, set as uh, true so what happened when i click on this uh, button right here So as you can see that when I click on it, it become true. When I click it again, it become false. And also for the second one right here, let's just take a look. So by default, this is false. When I click on here, it come true. So that means that it works, but um, we just need to change this color. 
So now let's just go back to the code. It will be right here. Okay, so um, right here, I uh, just need to look for this uh, color right here. So by default, this is uh, default, and I need to write a condition. So this will be the let's just use the back tick uh, because we need to get the data. It is the pet favorite. If that's true, it means that we use the uh, secondary color. Otherwise, we will just use the default one. All right, so it will look something like this. Let's just save it and go back to the website and give it a quick refresh. Okay, so here you guys can see uh, by default this is true. When I click on it, it becomes false. And yep, meaning that it works now. Also for the second one right here as well. So yep, that um, how we try to create the uh, function for the is favorite. Alright guys, so now let's just uh, try to create a form uh, so that we can just uh, submit or try to add a new pad. So now let's just take a look here. So uh, I'm in the uh, materialui.com again. So now I'm looking for a text field in under the uh, input section. Okay, so once we are in here, um, we will need a form. So I would um, probably just try to use this for now. So let's just click on this to see the code. So we will need to import. Um, let me just try to copy this part first. All right, just copy that. Come back here. I will try to create a new file uh, called at pet.js so just to make sure that this is not actually a page it uh, just a component so now let's just try to create one or a fce if you still remember that okay so let's just paste everything here now let's just go back and see also, let's just copy all of this. All right, so right here, paste it. We have the use style here, just a margin and also the width. And yep, let's just save it. Uh, we need to import it in the app.js. So let me just import it right here. Import add pads from under pages it will be add pads save it right now let's just scroll down um, looking for the component right here so we will need to put this uh, right here um, one thing is that right now it is inside this um, uh, function so we will need to wrap this using this um, array so let's just come back again right here so I will need to call the add pads, right? Will look like this, a comma in between. Now let's just save it. Okay, let's just take a look here. All right, guys. So here you can see this is what the form look like at the moment. Um, we need to change this. So let's just go back. I'll need to get rid of these two. I'll choose the first one. Uh, let's just copy that, paste it here. So this will be the right now inside the uh, data. We have name, age, image, and is favorite. So I'll change this to name, age. Um, this one will be the image URL for the favorite. Um, you can add more actually, but uh, for now let's just keep it as is. And this will be name age uh, this will be URL okay save that take a look again yep that would look like this so let's see if uh, there's something else we can try uh, so this is the number type it only allow the number all right so let's just take a look at the code 
we can have the uh, type as number so this is for the age let's just save that and yep I cannot type any letter on, uh, only accept the uh, number right now so what else do we have to uh, we need to look for the uh, again just for the checkbox if uh, you want to have like a checkbox they are saying uh, if I read if uh, we have to select it as yes then by default it will save this as true but for now I don't want to save anything I just use the uh, default value which is false for the is spirit so the button I'm looking for the button right here okay for button uh, we have the uh, primary just to make sure that we need to import the uh, button on top as well this will be the primary button the blue one so I'll just put it down here okay let's just save that um, this will be save the primary color you have to be fine let's just come back here alright here it is it does nothing at the moment so what I can add right here I can just say like the type of this button it will be the uh, submit okay so let's just save that take a look again so when I click on this button it will just submit the whole form and you can see that the page refresh but right now it does nothing at all alright so now that the uh, UI has finished so what uh, we're going to do next is to basically to have the ability to send the data and try to create a new pad all right so now let's just try to import use state <coughs> from react and down here we just need to um, I just put it down here we need to use the name set name and use state so it take a string I just copy this for time so this time this will be the so right now we have name age and URL so this will be age this set age uh, it take us number so we don't need the um, double quotes and right here this is the URL which take a string so this is fine last one uh, will be the um, the is favorite so I'll just say as favorite set favorite by default this one will be set as false but just to keep in mind that this is not uh, showing in the uh, UI all right now let's just save that so right here in the uh, text field I'll just say value equal to name so we'll get the value coming from here and it try to show it here right on the fly when we use the on change okay so right here this will be e event and then we just set the name it will be e dot target value so right here let's just try to copy this and paste it down here for the other two like so change this from name to age this will be set age and this one will be URL and then here set URL alright then uh, it will look like this save that and to test this now let's just come back here I'll try to go to the add pad right here so these are the state now let me just type something here you can see that we get the value right here and also the age which is right here the number and the URL and for the um, is spirit by default this will be set as false so that's working 
So now let's just go back to the app level here. Uh, we will try to create a new function. So this will be add pad. Uh, will be pad right here. So I just want to console log this one first. So it will be pad like that. And down here, um, we will need to also pass this in. So it will be on add and just add the add pad right here. Just save that. Okay, so now come to the on uh, add pad. So we'll write here on add, right? Save that. Okay, so um, to submit the whole form, we will need to have a function right here. So on submit uh, the event and here just put the on submit right here so we will need to create a function which call on submit arrow function and we need to use the e prevent before so the purpose is basically we don't want to have the page reloads when we click on the add button okay and right here will be the on add, which basically we import it right here. And by this time, we use the name, which is coming from here, age, URL, and also favorite. Okay, now let's just save that. All right, so now let's just try to go to the console and say test one url test click on the save button and here you guys can see we now have this value okay so that is working now the next step i want to do is to uh, add the pet so now uh, create this uh, the first one is the id i basically uh, what i want uh, to do now is to uh, get the length of all of the uh, pet so far we have uh, this one one and two all right so we get the length of that plus one meaning that if i add a new pet to it that will try to uh the id will become three or if uh, i have three in the uh, data here then it will become four all right so uh, now we have the id uh, now i create a new pet here we just uh, add the id right here plus the pad, uh, pad here referring to the uh, text box the text field that we have the data the user input so next thing i want to do is to set uh, pads this will be uh, we will copy all of the pads the existing pads and we add the uh, new pad which is right here onto the old one so this is uh, what it look like right now let's just take a look at the uh, browser and now let's just try to uh, say like prop test just one um, image url right now we don't have so i just say image url like that just uh, now let's just click on the save button okay so here you guys can see uh, down here we get the uh, another card which say uh, test with the age of one and uh, we can also uh, at the uh, is favorite as well and i can also delete this all right guys so just a quick one here if uh basically if you want uh don't want to show this uh form right here uh whenever that the page loads then uh what you can do you can have like instead of uh, the whole form here you can just have like a button saying it's like add pad and then once you have the uh the button uh, whenever that the user click on that button it will try to change the um, right here so it's just say uh, like the uh, while you here by default it is false so whenever the user click on the uh, add button then it will try to change that into the uh, true value so it will become like true for now i just uh, give you a quick example i just put like false but you of course you can create like a, a new state here saying it's like uh, if uh, is show or something then uh, down here uh, you will use that variable to check it but for now let me just quickly show you what i mean by that just using the uh, false value uh, and this uh, particular 
um, uh, component all right so now you can see that it's uh, hidden but whenever the user click on the uh, button then it will just show it turn or uh, change from the default value to true value then it will show that form to the users so that's something that you can also implement uh, the uh, right now what we are using here is the short uh, basically like a shortcut uh, you what you can also do is using like a variable and then check if it's true then if not using the uh, ternary uh, operator but uh, this is like a shortcut okay so I'm not gonna implement that feature in this tutorial so now uh, let's just come back this is what we uh, have so far all right hey guys so next uh, we will be looking into how to uh, fix the data coming from an API so right here you can see the website is the uh, uh, mug api.io so it is free you can come to the website and uh, log in with your gmail account then uh, let me just quickly log in this and i'll show you how to create a project inside this website okay so once logged in this is what you can see now let's just create a new project i call this as react cross course and with the prefix i can leave it like this for now and click on the create button so now i'm here click on the project name and then i can just click on the new resource so right here um, this will be the uh, you, uh, api endpoint right so I'll call this as uh, pet. Make sure to put this as a lowercase, otherwise you get an error. So now let's just scroll down uh, right here. Let me just copy because uh, we have to provide the JSON template here. Uh, so instead of this, I'll just try to copy a few more. Okay, so um, we don't actually need the this, yep. So next one will be H. Uh, we have the age and then uh, the URL and also we have last one here which is the uh, is favorite right so we also can get rid of this um, right so this is what it look like and now let's just scroll down and click on the create button okay so it seems that um yep make sure that you delete the comma at the end of this as well now click on the create button right here you can see we have this endpoint which we can use it within our react uh, application so now let me first quickly go to this url and make sure that it has to uh, slash uh, pads right so yep it seemed to be fine we just need to provide the data inside this uh, ul endpoint now let me just quickly grab this endpoint all right guys so once you copy the url then uh, you just need to paste here and you might also uh, see that these are all the new code uh, because uh, i think that this uh, tutorial or this cross source is take longer than expected so i just written all of the code here and try to explain you instead okay so here uh, on top you can see that i use the use effects so what the uh, does use effect does is basically whenever that we try to load the page or uh, try to load the website then it will just fire this action so now let me just uh, quickly go through the code here so what this does is basically uh, i use the async and await so it will just try to fix all of the pads so now let's just take a look at this function down here uh, we also use the async and await as well so this fix the uh, url which is um, the uh, api endpoint and once we have that we just put this into this uh, variable called uh, res or stand for response then we turn it into the json format right and uh, put this into the uh, variable called data then it return so basically we call this function and once we have that data then we put it into this uh, pass variable and finally we just need to uh, set all of the uh, data coming from this uh, endpoint and put it into the uh, set uh, pads so for this one right here this is basically we just call this function to use 
So this uh, line of codes uh, you can see here is whenever that we load the page, we will get the data coming from this uh, endpoint, right? So that what the function does. And next one here is the uh, add pad. So add pad, this is another function. We again, I use the uh, async and await. So here, this is the URL, the endpoint. And this time I use the uh, method post because we want to create a new resource or create a new data. And we also, I also provide the uh, headers as well. So this is in the application slash JSONs and we uh, in the body. So this is what we uh, ever that we have in the pad, then we uh, provide in the body. Uh, down here, we also have the uh, response, uh, turn it into the JSONs, and this is the data. So we uh, try to get all of the uh, paths, the existing path right here, and we add the new data into it. So uh, right here, this is inside the, uh, set, um, the set path, right? So um, that's what this one does. And the purpose of uh, having set pads here, whenever that we try to add a new resource or a new data to it, then it will also show it right on the fly, uh, update the uh, data on the uh, UI. Okay, so that's uh, the add pad. Next one here will be the um, remove pad. So remove pad again will be using the async and await. And we try this time instead of uh, fixing just the uh, slash pads, we also try to uh, access particular uh, pads. So right here, the method will be delete. And I check here as well. So if the response status equal to 200 and that uh, successfully delete, then we can try to uh, set all of the uh, filtering out the pads uh, with the uh, which basically I tried to explain you already like uh, previously and we set that into the pads so if it's not successful then it alerts saying that delete fell. Um, right here we also have the uh, fixed uh, pads so this will be related to the uh, is a favorite right so we have the hard button so when you click on that then we will be able to uh, send the uh, put request to this so let me just uh, quickly uh, try to explain you for this one uh, this will be fixed particular uh, pad just uh, one pad at a time so again similar to the delete one uh, we have this and we put this into this variable called uh, response and put it into data and return it so now down here uh, you can see that we await and try to uh, fix the uh, pads, which is this function. Uh, we have the ID provided, and then we put it into this uh, pad to favorite. It means uh, it about to uh, whether it is like a favorite one or not. Then down here, we also have the uh, all of the existing favorite, and this is the uh, one that uh, the new one that is just uh, about to be updated. Then we just put it into this uh, variable, right? Uh, the updated uh, uh, favorite. So once we have that down here, you can see that I try to uh, use this again, the uh, URL, but this time the method will be put. It uh, stand for or referring to the update. Um, the uh, header will be uh, the application slash JSON, similar things uh, with providing with the body, which is uh, what or uh, which pad is about to be updated, put it into the uh, uh, favorite, right? And down here, we uh, just use that uh, response JSON, so put it into the, uh, this data. And down here, um, which is similar uh, things to the one that we look into, I also comment this one out as well. This is the previous code, so that uh, we just need to map through this. Uh, if the ID is, uh, exactly the same as the one we are looking for. This is the existing pad. And then right here, we just need to uh, update that, right? The updated. Then if not, we just need to uh, give the uh, existing one. So that's uh, what it looked like right now uh, with all of the function that I tried to explain you. So now let's just uh, come back here. Um, now what I need to do, I can just try to uh, add, say like a, a new pad, probably just use the old one, uh, might be easier for you. H and then the URL. 
uh, right now I don't have one uh, just say example.com and click on the sale button okay so here you guys can see that uh, we have this edit right and here we have the uh, Ruby and also the age if I want to um, deselect this click again on one of this so let me refresh this real quick to see if it actually uh, take effects and here you guys can see that uh, it is updated once I click on this button and if um, I try to refresh this real quick you can see that we also have the old data right here as well because we uh, right here it has uh, haven't uh, finished the update or fixing the data coming from the API that's why it's showing here but uh, you can of course uh, try to comment this one out so let me just comment this real quick and save it now let's just go back here and here you guys can see that it won't show anymore so it this the data is fixing from the uh, API now let me just try to use the other one say Coco and the image URL uh, example2.com then save it right so here you guys can see we have this Alright guys, so if you notice, you can see that there's an issue with this uh, is favorite, right? Because uh, by default, it's supposed to be the false value, but right now, uh, it shows the opposite. Now, let's just um, uh, check here, and here you can see that um, when I enter the URL, uh, we have this is favorite and favorite, right? So, um, there are basically two things. Then, uh, let's just come back to the ad pad then uh, what we can do we can just um, try to update this one right so update this to is favorite okay so is favorite now down here we also need to change this to is favorite now let's just take a look again let's just refresh this okay so um, this one will be the heart which means that true right here it show us true right so now let me just update this real quick. So this uh, will send the uh, put request to the back end. Now let's see if this is updated to false. Okay, so um, yep, that's working guys. Now let me try to add a new file, a new name, uh, URL here, example1.com. Click on the save button. Right here we get the data showing uh, Ruby. And by default, yes, it is so as false. I click on this. Then let's just check the endpoint. Here we have the uh, is favorite it, it equal to true. And the avatar here, uh, you don't need to worry about it because by default, this um, uh, website, it provides us this uh, by default, right? Um, then uh, let now I click on this delete button, then come back again, see if this is deleted. Yep, it is working as expected. Okay, so now that we have this, now let's uh, get into providing the uh, URL. So uh, I'll try to do this as test uh, h5 and then the URL. Let me try to grab it from the uh, code. So uh, right here, let me just copy this and try to paste it here and click on the save button. Okay, so here you can see that uh, the image is not showing. Now let's just uh, take a look at the back end. Uh, here we can see that the URL is actually uh, saved to the back end. Now let's just take a look at the code. Uh, here I can see that this is the uh, pad.img. It's supposed to be the URL. So just change that. And now let's just go back here, try to refresh this. And here it is guys. So now we have the image shown. We can uh, add this to the favorite. Let's refresh this. It is still working or not. Yes, it does. And we can also try to uh, click on this uh, button to delete the data as well. Okay, so that seemed to be fine. Now the last step, the final uh, thing that I want to do is uh, right now you can see that it show this card uh, Horizontally, I just want to have it shown here. Maybe three cards uh, in a row. Okay, so 
Um, to do that, here come to the uh, website and uh, go with the uh, grid section. Now let me just uh, scroll down to show you. So right here uh, we have this uh, sample as well and I'm looking for this one right here, the interaction. So right here you can see that when I click on any of this, the card actually changed uh, right on the fly and also the code here as well. So we can see the code uh, change down here. So now I want to have the direction uh, astro, uh, which is right here. And for the just uh, the five, uh, I can just play around with this, whether I want to have the space in between, uh, space around, uh, probably space event. So I think I can just uh, probably go with the uh, center for now. And uh, right here, the align items, it can start uh, flex start or in the center. I think this is um, the one uh, I can try for now. So uh, basically, I just need to uh, copy the code here, right? And go back to the uh, code here, which is in the uh, home.js. So right here, this is the uh, map function that we're going to uh, go through uh, each card. So we have to have the styling uh, around here. So to have that, let me just quickly paste everything here and also try to uh, cut this part right here and uh, just paste it down here and make sure that uh, to wrap everything inside the curly uh, bracket. Okay, and uh, the semicolon is no longer required. Now let's just quickly save that and remember to also import the uh, grid as well. So let's just take a look at the top one here. So now let me just uh, quickly grab the code. So which is right here, the grid. Just need to import that one on top here. All right, and save it. Now let's just take a look again. So refreshing. All right, guys, so here you can see that it align center. But um, the thing is that I want to also have the uh, the correct uh, width as well. So just quickly go back to the pad.js, which is right here in the media. I want to also add like the width as well. So maybe you can try with uh, 250 pixel. So here it's a uh, save. And here you guys can see that we have this uh, show uh, horizontally now. So um, let's see if uh, something else that we can uh, try to improve as well. So right here, this is a line center. Probably we can try space event uh, evenly, right? So now uh, the code right here I can just quickly grab that and going back to the home.js and quickly change it here. So save it. Now let's just go back, take a quick look. And here you guys can see it's look a lot better now. And let's just try if two things, uh, whether uh, this is actually working uh, fine. Now let me just try to, instead of like uh, finding the new pet name, I'm going to say uh, just test uh, three, H1, and then the image URL. So to find the image, uh, you can come to this website, the dog.co, uh, right? And here you guys can see, I can just click on this button and it will uh, show me the random dog uh, image and including the uh, uh, URL for the image as well. So I just copy that and go back here and paste it here in this uh, columns uh, in this field image URL and click on the save button. So here it will save this uh, data, which is test three and H1 with the image URL that's saved to the database as well, right? So here we have a uh, three card. Now let me just quickly uh, go with the fourth and see if it's actually going uh, to the uh, next line or not. So now let me just quickly grab the other image. So this is the dog looking for a better one, probably this one. Let's just try to copy that, come back here. Also provide the age, save it. And here we got four going back here, trying a few more uh, images. And this one right here, 
just copy going back we'll say test 5 h5 with this uh, image url click on the save button and here we have uh, five cards uh, in a row and what about the next one let's say the sixth one whether it's going to the next one uh, next line or not we'll find out let me look for um, another one right here okay I think um, to be this one now let's just copy the link going to this one will be test 6 and the uh, age will be 4 the link and save button and here you guys can see it goes to the next line whenever that there is no space uh, anymore right so this is uh, very responsive all right so uh, now let me just try to inspect this to change the uh, screen size so here when i am in this uh, inspect mode here you get a uh, guy can see i can just uh, resize this and then the uh, card it uh, responsive and that's how you implement or try to show the card horizontally right so uh, let me just save some of this whether it's working yep I click on this to add it to favorite and try to refresh the page and here you guys can see it showing me the correct data so um, I think that's pretty much it guys I hope you learn a lot from this class course and if you have any question just let me know in the comment section down below don't forget to also like this video and subscribe to the channel to get more content or more cross course uh, just as this one. Until then, see you guys in the next video.